Welcome to the Circuit of Success. I'm your host, Brett Gilliland, and today I've got Dr. Brooke Weinstein with me. Brooke, how you doing? Good. How are you? You know, I'm good. I'm stressed out and mad right now because all this fancy equipment I've got and my darn computer won't keep a charge. So I was about four minutes late to our episode, but uh, that's not what we're here to talk about. But that, that's how I really, truly eat. We got to be raw today, aren't we, on this podcast? Absolutely. It's We don't say, how are you in my world? I say, how are you feeling? So absolutely. Yes. I'm glad for you to share that. Absolutely. Well, you are a doctor of occupational therapy, and uh, I know you've had a uh, an awesome business and, and built that and, and got out of that. And you are doing other things now. You're helping people all over the world, really, with parenting mm-hmm. and the grind and success and uh, the stuff that you've lived through. And so I'm happy to, for us to connect and chat about it. And, but if you could, maybe let's, let's go back to the, the brook of however long you want to go back to and, and kind of what's made you the woman you are today. Sure. Um, first of all, thank you so much for having me. Uh, I always feel that it's an honor to be asked and um, to be interested in my story, as well as um, for anyone who's listening to take the time to listen to this. And um, thank you for having me here. Absolutely. I would say my story starts, gosh, from how I've gotten to where I've gotten is over the course of a decade plus, um, I was a very young clinician and I started in the hospital setting and I've always known that I wanted to work with pediatrics and I was working back to back to back every 30 minutes, seeing a client. And I could see how much these parents were craving and yearning for me to really make a true impact in the child's life. And between paperwork and notes and talking to parents about what was going on in the session, um, there was literally like 20 minutes. There was not much I could do. And you can just see like parents were driving, they were pulling them out of school. They were taking off of work to be able to get their child help and support And I got burnt out in the hospital system very, very quickly. And I kept waking up thinking to myself, this, this can't be it. Like, this is not what I went to school for. And, uh, at the time I was newly married and also navigating what it's like to be a husband and wife and doing all the different things of home ownership and you name it, it just keeps piling up. And I made a very courageous decision as a young clinician to step away from the hospital system and start my own clinic. I was a very, very young clinician and I wanted to do things differently and I wanted to impact the lives of children and that model was not working. So I set off with a business partner and I did that business for six years. It was brick and mortar. and. It was very heavily based in parent education and teaching them what we were doing. And yet it was still falling short of my goal of wanting to impact children in the way in which I had always set out to do. And at that time in my life, those six years, I had two preemies of my own, three years apart. Um, My partner, Jonathan, was exhausted and running a company as well. And we had an opportunity for him to move for a really great business opportunity for him. And um, I then had to decide and any females listening, listening to this, I'm sure you can understand what I'm about to say, but it's like, wait, hold on. Are we're going to move for your career? But like I built a business too. So like, mm-hmm. what are we, what are we going to do here? And it very much felt like whether Jonathan did not, it was just what was happening, but it was very much like, okay, where do we go from here? And my family, the the peanut gallery of everyone who loves me said, what are you doing? Like you've built a business, like this is your career. And I silenced the noise and I just said, okay, Brooke, let's sit with this. Like, 
where are you at and what do you want? And I decided to sell that business to my business partner and move here to Austin, Texas. And what I recognized from taking time off after I sold that business was I truly understood why the hospital model didn't work and why my own business didn't work and the way in which I wanted it to. And it's because we are all working so freaking hard just to, before we even hit record, like you were saying, you're, you're, you're putting in the work, you're doing the effort. You're hopefully able to grab, you know, a turkey sandwich and, and rush off to your, your boys games, like your, your kids, you know, like we are constantly trying to do more and more and more and more and more. And our brains and bodies were not meant for this. They weren't. And so we get burnt out. And I recognize that in order to see long lasting impact with what was going on with the children, it couldn't be treatment, excuse me, treatment with the children. It had to be working with the parents to help them understand what the heck is going on, how their nervous system works, why they're feeling burned out, run down, exhausted and depleted, and what it looks like to regulate your body on a nervous system level, on the neuroscience level, rather than mindfulness and meditation and journaling and going to the gym and the impact of what I've always wanted to impact children has finally come to fruition, which is like the coolest thing ever. So, so when you say that stuff, so, so walk me through in layman's terms of what you mean by that, because I do believe in journaling. I do believe in meditation. I do believe in the fitness and getting those. um, I don't know all the doctor words that you guys all know, but, but sure, those things are so important, right? Those endorphins, different things like that. But, but you're talking about another level. Yes, I am. Is that what I'm yes. hearing you say? So, so walk us through that. What does that mean? How do you do that? How do we get into that? How does a parent that doesn't have somebody like you in their life, how do we get to that point in our life? Sure. So the fact that you meditate, you journal, and you go to the gym tells me as a clinician that you are doing a phenomenal job of figuring out what your body needs and how to give that to your body to maintain a, I call it like the equator, right? For those of you listening, think of like the equator and we either function in fight or flight, which is above the equator where you're, you're, you're going and you're doing, and you're not even, it's like a tornado. It's like, like static. Yeah. Or we're in rest or digest where we're chill. We're hanging out at the beach and we got a pina colada in our hands. Right. Like, and we always fluctuate between the two. And what's happening is we're seeing that in children, they can't sit in their chairs at school. They can't attend for a long period of time. We've stripped away gym class or recess. Yeah, but we're still expecting them to sit and stay all day. And we don't recognize what we're doing at a neuroscience level to these children. So we have to start with the parent. But how that looks is really If you understand from a neuroscience level that meditation is actually going to support the healing of your brain, your body, the stress level, so that you can live longer and watch your children walk down the aisle and be able to have great grandchildren, that is what I'm talking about at this level to be understand, to, excuse me, understand exactly how your brain and your body feel in every single moment, in the most strenuous moments. So you can give yourself what you need. You can say, time out. I need to go take some deep breaths and meditate. Time out. I need to put some food in my system. Hold on. I'm going to work out and then we'll have the meeting. Yep. And that- I couldn't agree more. Yes. Yes. And, and I wear this, you probably can't see it, but I wear a I love that. Little bit. Yeah. Yep. So the whoop uh, to your fight or flight, um, it measures that. Right? Like, I mean, on a daily basis. And uh, yep. yeah, I've worn it for, gosh, almost two years probably. And the data that I get and the real time feedback that I get daily, weekly, and monthly in their reports is off the charts. Right. So I mean, I, I know 
literally, and it, this is all simple, right? This is nothing new to this, but it's, it's when you know it's good data in, good data out, I know where I'm going to live my best and be at my best the next day, which is going to allow me to be a better husband, a better father, a better leader, a better whatever, right? Because I know the data and you get mm -hmm. a journal every single morning. And this isn't a, a, a commercial for Whoop, but I think whatever your Whoop is, is you got to know that stuff. And I know I've got a certain yes. time. If I, if I stay up past that bedtime, I'm going to pay the price tomorrow. So then I have a choice to make. Yes. Right. Yes. Yes. A thousand percent. I'm actually going to call you on a word though. You said a better parent and a better father and a better husband. And I want you to think of it more as like a happy, mm. like I get to be a happy father. I get to be a happy husband because yeah. that's, that's a gift. It's a gift to yourself. And I think that that's one of the big differences of what I'm doing and teaching is like, yes, people tell, like you said, so tell us about the, the, the meditation and the journaling, because I do all that stuff. I particularly do not have time to journal. Now the benefits of journaling is pen to paper and, and in, input into your hand, into your brain. Like there's, there's phenomenal research behind it, but some of us don't have time. Sure. And so if we can access through, I call it calibrating the brain, not rewiring the brain, but calibrating the brain in order for you to think about the steps that I take within the months that I work with my clients is how do I feel? Where do I feel it in my body? So it's connecting a feeling to an emotion in your body, what do I need? Do I need to go meditate? Do I need to go do yoga? Do I need to lay in bed? Do I need to go punch a wall or a pillow, right? What do I need and how do I go get it? The language in which we use to support ourselves in requesting it from our partnerships or from our life or for ourselves. That is how you emotionally and sensory have the ability to regulate yourself in every single moment in like within. And yeah. to be quite honest, I probably should buy a loop because I I'm, I've known about it. I just haven't done it yet, but <laughs> yeah. like, it's incredible. Well, you do for that, living, it's absolutely incredible. Right. If you can access that, not by just reading some data on a screen of it telling you when you're, when, if you were in flight or flight, or if you were in rest and digest, but yeah. you being able to literally feel it within yourself and to be able to say, I feel this, I, I what do I need? I, I need silence, right? For parents, it's, I'm on red. Like I feel angry, right? I just said how I feel. I need a moment. Go walk in your room and close the door. And you're expressing to your children your feelings. So you're teaching them emotional intelligence. You're honoring how you're feeling inside your body to slow it down, slow up, excuse me, slow down that ramp up process of fight or flight. And you're getting what you need. I need a moment. Yep. And you can relax your shoulders, take a deep breath, do what you need to do in that moment. And then go back and be like, well, hey, what's up? Yeah. And just like, keep going. So, so let's, I'm going to pick on something you said, like, yes, you said, so do I it. love this, right? You challenged my thought. And so do it. you said, I don't have time to journal. So yes. would you say that's a choice or would you say it's a, eh, I just don't enjoy it. So therefore I'm not going to make it part of my day because I believe in, we all have choice, right? You have choices. I have, yes. have choices. And I have made it a choice since July of 2005. So a long time. Yes. And I'm not sitting here like, oh, I'm reading a novel, writing a novel. I'm not that type of journal. I'm yes. not talking about my feelings and thoughts. Mine yes. are more walking through my day. What do I need to do? What have I done? What are my biggest challenges? What am I most proud of? Yes. Um, who did I help today? You know, those types of things. But for me, it's not a, here, take five minutes. It's a, it's throughout the day, right? So this is yes. a blank page, open, but th this is it, right? And there's a scorecard before, there's a scorecard at the end of 90 days. And so I, I would ask you that or challenge you that back is if you know that scientifically it's so good for our body, mm -hmm. what method are you using to replace it instead of journaling? It's X. What is that for you? Oh my gosh. I'm like, so happy you asked that question. Like, like, 
Thank you. So <laughs> your brain and your body work differently than mine. Yep. So I'm going to give you an example. I'm sure you've heard of the diagnosis ADHD, right? Sensory processing disorder is another huge one that's coming up within our children's, gener excuse me, generation. Yeah, so sensory sure. processing disorder means your sensory system processes it in a dysfunctional way. Okay. I give all of my clients what's called the sensory profile. It's a standardized assessment where I can literally tell you how your brain functions for me and the way that my internal sensory system functions. I do best by bilaterally moving my body. I seek input into my body. So I do best moving my body and I do best by verbally journaling. So I do it in a verbal sense while I'm moving mo both sides of my body. Now, the thing that's so crucial to understand that you pointed out here is, or helped point out is, I know what I need or what I want. I want to go on a walk. Sometimes I want to lay in bed. Sometimes I want to read a book. Sometimes I want to do yoga, but there is so much out there that says, if you do this, right, if you come to this kickboxing class for 30 days, you're going to be a different human, right. right? Your body needs different things in different moments. And each brain is one thousand percent different than the next. And so what you need and what you and what works for you may work for thousands of others. It may. And then others, other things might work as well, which is why there's so many modalities. We have to start looking at it as it's all regulation. It's all for the, be the same exact purpose. But the way in which we do that is individualized, not only to the human, but also to the moment. Yeah. I could not agree more than I, yeah. I appreciate you sharing that because it, everybody's different, right? I don't expect somebody to be working out of a workbook all day long, right? But for me, it just happens to work. Yes. Right. And I think and that, so you that's do it. important to know that's that. what works. I, absolutely. Do it. Yes. And I, and I know the days that I don't do it. Yes. You know, like I feel different. I feel yes. different. So, um, so let, let's talk about self-care. So we're, we're kind of on that point we totally right are. now, but I know it's a big passion of yours. And so when you think of self-care, what does that look like? Everything, everything maybe you just explained, you say next yes. question, Brad, or what? Yes. So we can get into a little bit of my own personal story. Um, I know that I mentioned my partner before, for those of you who are listening, I am now, um, my, my journey and my path has led me to widowhood and, um, it has not been an easy path and the word self-care means more to me and sensory regulation and emotional regulation mean more to me than ever before, because as a parent, as a CEO and a business owner, it is so crucial for me to be able to show up for myself, my children, my employees, and my clients. Like it is so, so important. And not only is it important, I love doing that. I love my life. But in order to have all that, we must first and foremost take care of ourselves. And especially, which is why I work with parents, especially with our shoulds and how fast the world works today of, oh, I should go to the PTA meeting, or I, I should be on that board, or I, I should um, do X, Y, Z, right? And then parents are coming to me and saying, I don't understand why I'm snapping at my kids. I don't understand why at the end of the day, I'm thinking to myself, I I've had it. Like, why can't I just make it through the day without like doing this one time? I should be able to do more. I should be able to do better. And 
we're so damn are hard looking, on ourselves. Yes. We're, we're just the guilt and shame is just, I mean, it, I've seen it firsthand within my own home and yeah. there, I'm one, I'm one human down here, right? Because of the way in which we just put so much amount of pressure and, and place so much on ourselves to, to show up in the way that the world expects us to, or the, the pressure we place on ourselves. And at the end of the day, we have to understand how to give to ourselves in order to give to others and the way in which you journal and meditate and go to the gym and, and you're still able to show up for everyone that you support and your family and your, your children and yourself is because you're doing the beautiful things because you're regulating yourself and because you are taking care of yourself unapologetically without shame, without guilt and saying, I know this is what I need. I know this is what my brain and body need. And if we can start teaching humans that that's like how your brain functions, my clients begin to release the shame and guilt and start saying, I know this is healthy for me. Yeah. And I think too, and I know the answer to this question, but I'm going to ask it anyway, because I think it's so important and will give people the quote unquote permission. They don't need my permission, obviously, mm -hmm. but I think you do need to give yourself permission because you can feel yes. selfish, right? Oh my gosh. Yes. Yes. Especially parents. And I mean, we're taking time away from, and I'm going to use quotes here. Like we're taking time away from giving it to our children, but if we're showing up and we're exhausted and we're run down and we're scrolling on our phone, right? Because we're trying to ramp right. our brain down from the day and transition. Like you would be better spent walking the neighborhood for a few you know, minutes, trying to take some deep breaths. Yeah. And but even then it's, it's tough. Right. Because I, I know, it's, I mean, I'm looking at, right. There's a, a track around this pond by a hospital, by my office. And many times I go out there and I'll walk and you yeah. know, return some phone calls, but then there's that guilt of like, gosh, I need to be in the office doing this, or I need to be doing that. And, and I know it. Cause I, I mean, I have hosted a podcast for five years. I've, I've journaled for whatever, 12, 15 yeah. years, you know, yeah. a long, long time on this, I guess, gosh, 16 years now. Wow. Um, I know better, but yet it's still very hard to give yourself the permission to do it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I love that you said that because um, I, I, I st yeah, like we all still struggle with it. What it is, is it's, it's moving the needle, right? It's, it's moving the needle one tiny percent to say, I do feel this. Like it's like you said, permission, like it's okay that I feel guilty right now. It's okay that yeah. I feel like I'm taking away from time with my kids. But I also know that this moment and what I'm doing right now is really beautiful as well. And that is enough. I am doing enough. And I am just doing like, enough. I love that. Right? It's probably going to be the title of this podcast. Yeah, I am like, doing enough. Yes, we're doing enough. Um, we're doing so much that we don't even recognize how much we're doing. Like it's, there's a reason why it's called the immediacy culture at the moment, you know, because it's like, you should be doing the shoulds versus your must, right? Like what should you be doing versus what must you be doing? I must go outside and get some fresh air. Like I must, because I'm yeah. feeling a little claustrophobic in here versus I should be sitting at my computer completing all those emails. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, you're absolutely right. And I think too, it's, I spend time with my kids on this, but you know, what are you the most proud of today? Love. Did you try something new today? Love. What that. was your biggest challenge today? And who did I help today? Yes. And maybe not every day you have those, you, you know, you got answers, but to your point, the shoulds were, you know, the old, we, we've all heard this, the, I get to versus I got to, and yes. I get to do this versus I've got to do this. Yes. Right. And so I think that for me, again, this, this scorecard, if you will, is so helpful because I can end the day and be like, God, I was busy, but what did I really accomplish? What, what really happened? And if you're running a million miles an hour, like all of us are on this pod, listen to this podcast, 
is sometimes you can lose track of the day, but when you, you keep, you keep score, it really, in my opinion, and that's probably your verbal journaling is that's when it matters. And, and when you know exactly what all you've accomplished and you can feel good and be happy. Yes. I would love to ask you a question. Um, if you don't mind sharing when your children, yeah. when you ask them those questions, um, how do you respond? Oh, that's a great question. Um, I think I just listen, you know, and I hopefully that they're soaking it in. Maybe, and maybe you'll give me some advice on things I need to do better. Trust me, there's a million things I need to do better, I'm sure. But um, you're doing I, enough. I to, you're doing uh, enough. <laughs> I am doing it. The title of the damn podcast. I but, am enough, but right? I, but I think um, it's a great question and you've stumped me. But I think it, it's, I want them to think about their biggest challenge that I'm, I'm sure. hopeful that they will learn to go back through their day. And you know what? It's okay to have a challenge. Yes. It's okay to fail. It's okay to try something new. What? And I may ask that. Actually, I do ask that. What did you learn? You tried something new and you're seven years old. What did you learn? Well, you know, I fell down and it hurt or, you know, whatever it may be. I, I want them to know that we got to try new things. And if okay. they can have that belief and that abundance mentality versus the scarcity mentality, yes. they're going to go in a lot bigger places um, and hopefully change the world. Right. That's what I mean. I want them to be happy and 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 stuff. So it's and, and when I say successful, I don't mean just financially. I want them to be successful in their community and the things they go out yes. and impact. That that's what my wife and I both want is that stuff. But it's hard because whether you have one kid or four kid, or we had people in here today that had five kids and and it, it is crazy. And sometimes you're like, just freaking go to bed. Oh my right? gosh, yes. Be, yeah. yeah. Those days you're doing enough too. When you ask them to just go to freaking bed, I'm just going to tell yeah. all you people like it is okay. Right. It is okay. Samuel L. Jackson's book, you know, that's uh, you ever heard that his book, just go the F to sleep. Oh it's, yes, I think it's yes, Samuel yes. Jackson that narrates it. Yeah. Yes. That's a classic. Uh, Cause we're all that way. Right. Yeah. I really appreciate you answering that. Um, and the reason I asked it, it was not really to put you on the spot, but just to simply hear from another, um, it was actually also nice to hear from a male um, and yeah. a dad because we, as parents, it we're, we freaking love their guts, like not just the yeah. outside, but the inside. And, yeah. and at the end of the day, we just want them to be happy. And because of that, when they aren't anything but there's physical pain for us. Like we feel it too. And so if they share with you a challenge or if they share with you something that was hard for them, our natural instinct, literally natural is to fix, like to be like, well, that's okay. Like Johnny didn't mean to push you, you know, like, it's fine. like you'll get them next time. Instead of just yeah. saying like, like you just said, it's okay. Like you literally said, it's okay to have something hard happen in your day. It's okay to have a struggle. It's okay to um, have a challenge, try something new. And I like, yeah, saying things like, thank you for sharing. That's more than okay that that happened. Or like, I'm so proud of you. Or like, wow, that's really interesting. Yeah. We as parents have a very hard time with, with, just acknowledging rather than saying, okay, let's, let's do this next time or, or, or this or yeah. that. And I, yeah. I freaking love that you said that. I very much appreciate you sharing that um, on the spot because it's an important part of getting comfortable with not having shame and guilt as an adult for what you should and shouldn't do. Right. Like you were just right. saying, walking around the pond. If we tell our kids like, well, maybe next time try it this way. Cause that didn't quite work. Right. Or like, Ooh, you probably shouldn't have done that. Right. So we just need to say, yeah, thanks for sharing. Yeah. And then ask more questions. Like, what do you think could, what do you think for next time? Like how could, like what would work next time? Yeah. And that's probably why I love doing a podcast. I've said for years, ADT is ask, don't tell. I, yeah. I, I would much rather ask the questions than tell you. Because if, if yes. I tell you to do something, then it's going to be, oh, that guy's telling me to do it. Versus if I ask you a question and get you to the same result, 
but you decide it's the gospel, right? Like, oh my gosh, Brooke came up with this amazing idea and you're going to go run through a brick wall for it versus if I told you the exact same thing, you're not going to. So let me, let me turn the page a little bit on that. And so what, what is it that you know now, as you said here today, that you wish you knew mm -hmm. 10 years ago, right? Mm. I'm going to just say what popped in my mind. Nothing. I'm like Nothing. so, so at peace with how my life has unfolded. And I know that, um, I mean, you kind of hear what I said when you um, answered the question, like, it's okay. Like, it's okay that things have happened the way they've happened. It's okay that I'm at where I'm at in my life. Um, I don't believe Can I interrupt real quick on that. Sure. Though? So, so you're, you say that now you've yes. gotten to that point, but yeah. I would assume, um, you know, with your whole story here, there were some really dark days that you would have called BS on that okay. because you were in a bad spot. Maybe I'm wrong, but no, I keep assume, going, keep going with this. Yeah. I would assume there's people driving down the road or exercising right now. And they're like, yeah, but Brooke, you don't know my situation. Like I'm in the freaking Oh. bottom of the barrel crappiness dark there's no light at the end of the tunnel there's nothing so yeah brooke whatever you've gotten to that point now but you didn't just you didn't just go from the the bad stuff that happened to today and be like oh i'm so thankful and you seem mm. so calm and at peace mm. with it I, and maybe yeah. again i'm wrong yeah, yeah. But i think you went yeah. through crap and back to get there for right? sure so how did you get through that How did I get through it? I didn't have a choice. A seven and a four year old. I, 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 10 years ago when my journey started, even with Jonathan, um, you, I, I, I just, you just keep going. You do what needs to be done and you yeah. learn along the way. Yeah. So I think that's what I hear is so the circuits of success, hence the podcast yes. you're on, it's attitude, your beliefs, your action ultimately gets you the results you want in your life. You define your results. I'm, I'm, this is an hour and a half talk in, in now 10 seconds, but sure. the, the, I think the action is what I hear there is you just had to take action and that action may be get out of bed, comb my hair, yes. take one step forward, be there for my kids yes. and edit, copy, edit, paste tomorrow. Is that fair? Yes. Yes. I, yes, I didn't have a choice and I just kept going. And at some point I decided not only can I keep doing this, not only am I doing this, but I'm going to freaking enjoy every moment and I'm going to figure out right. how I can enjoy it. And so I yeah. went to what I knew I could trust, which was the neuroscience to yeah. figure which out. Which is your how. background, right? That's your education as you know that. So for maybe yes. those of us that don't understand that, what I would right. tell them, and, and it doesn't mean it had to be the dumps of, of losing a partner or, you know, a husband. Uh, it, it could be, gosh, COVID has really hurt my business. Oh my and gosh. How am yes. I going to get through this? And, and it's, I'm telling you, I've just seen it for so many years with people and being around amazing stories and seeing them is it is the action part. It's put a little baby game plan together today, right? I want to go for a walk for 500 feet because I was guilty early on in my twenties and thirties trying to climb this ladder of it's all or nothing, right? I'm I'm going to do this yes. and I'm going to do that. And then yes. I would be disappointed because, well, even if I did, it, it's like, well, the bells and whistles didn't come off. Confetti didn't fall from the sky. Now what? Mm -hmm. Right. And it's not beating myself up over it. And so now my little thing is I, I'm not great at exercising, but it's if I can just get in one mile. But guess what happens if I get there? I usually get more than a mile in. Mm -hmm. But I've, I've in my mind, why, why am I not that disciplined guy that can, I got a guy I know that runs 10 miles a day. I'm like, I need to do that. And you try it for like three days and then you're like, well, this sucks, right? I'm not going to do this any longer. And so I'll get off my rant, but I just, I think it is that action it, yeah. of stepping forward day after day. Yeah. I think that, um, 
I think what stops us a lot of times that we don't even recognize that stops us is fear, even fear of success. Like you can sit and contemplate all the terrible, awful stuff that could potentially happen to try and figure out that crystal ball of like, what's, what's going to happen. Yeah. But when you think about fear of success of like, you, how does that feel to try and build that crystal ball? Right. Like try For that sure. exercise. And there's my absolute, I literally read it every day to like all of my clients. One of my most favorite quotes in the entire world is when it's by the Kaizen way, one small step can change your life. When life gets scary and difficult, we tend to look for solutions in places where it's easy or at least familiar to do so and not in the dark, uncomfortable places where real solutions might lie. And so the SHIT that you individually might be feeling today while listening to this podcast, like that's where you're supposed to be because- yep. Your brain and your body is processing through something. And in order to heal it, you have to feel it. If you push yeah. it away, you're shoving it down in a jar. And so it's okay to feel that. And I think that's why I say like, I wouldn't change a thing because I had to feel those things. Does it suck? You bet. Is it painful? Yeah. For sure. Have I screamed and felt angry? Like all the things, yes, but I allow it. I give myself yeah. permission to feel it. Yeah, and in the Kaizen way, isn't that something about, I've heard of that, isn't it something about small, small Very, And that's why it's a growth. tiny, small book, right? It's like moving oh, okay. the needle one yeah. tiny bit, yep. Okay, yeah, I knew I'd heard of it. I just, I couldn't remember why or where, but that's what I thought it was, um, which I, I, again, I agree with. I, I agree now, if you had asked the Brett, what, what do I know now that I didn't know 15, 20 years ago when I started in the financial world? I thought you had to think big and crush your goals and do all this stuff. And like, you know what, man, it's okay to take one baby step at a time. Yes. It really is. You're going to be okay. And it's funny, I started smiling when you talked about fear because the people that listen to this show all the time probably know where I was going to go with it. And you were kind of, you were starting to go down this path, but I always ask, and I have for five years, how many of the fears you've put in your mind have actually blown up to the magnitude to put them in your mind to be? That's a hard question for me. Yeah. Cause you've been through a lot. Because my greatest fear came true. Yeah. And maybe mm. that's the whole point is like, for any of you listening, like my greatest fear in life for my children and for myself and my partnership, it, it came to fruition and I'm still effing standing. Yeah. And I and think so that as, this couldn't have been a better way to answer that because most people say, no, it hasn't, but here's, let's take it one step further Then your, yeah. your biggest fear actually did come true. Most yeah. people say, nope, they never do. Yours did, yep. but is your life better or worse than you thought if that fear were to happen are you at exactly where you thought you'd be ahead of where you thought you'd be or worse than you thought you'd be if it happened I think that's why I answered the question before of like would I change anything and the answer is no because I would not be the human that I am today and I would not be able to support the humans that I do and understanding um and helping humans like understand that fear, it's just a freaking feeling. Mm -hmm. And if you just accept it and say, yeah, I see you fear, like, let's go. I, I this yeah. is uncomfortable physically in my body. This is physically uncomfortable in my body, but I know yes. it's going to pass. I know it's going to pass and that's okay. Have you read the book, feel the fear and do it anyway? No, I have not. It is a, uh, let's see. It is a great book. Um, I don't know why I can't find it right now on my bookshelf. I know, I thought I knew right where it's at. But anyway, Feel the Fear and Do It Anyway is a phenomenal book. I would highly recommend it to people. I'm a big reader. I will add um, it to my list. Yes, please do. So, um, well, we've had a lot of deep thoughts here today. So this is good stuff. What, um, how do you define success today? 
great question. Huh. Can I, uh, before you answer that, I'm going to make it, a yeah. note. So I, I am a, this, you, you talked about ADHD earlier. I'm like the, I jokingly say I have, it's not a joke, uh, but it's, I say I have ADD. I've never been diagnosed with that, but so pauses make me feel uncomfortable. And so what I've learned through people is the pause is okay. Yes, it right? is. And I want to make that note because as you pause, sometimes I'm like, oh crap. People are going to turn the podcast, you know, literally that's where my negative self-defeating thinking wow. goes. But what I'm learning from you is it's okay to slow down and have some thought before you just make a knee jerk uh, reaction answer to a question. So I appreciate but isn't that. that kind of what you've said in your own success of like, I, it needed to be all or nothing, right? Like pound the pavement, mm -hmm. do the thing, get there, get to success. And what you've recognized yeah. over the course of your path is it's really okay to take a breath. Like it's, yeah. it doesn't mean those thoughts aren't there. It doesn't mean the feelings aren't real. And I've got to tell you, every one of my clients who, who has that drive, you're not going to lose that. You're never going to lose that. Yeah. That's never going to go away, but you yeah. can take a deep breath. You can. And I think success is measured in how you feel and in your body and, and, I measure it based on ha if I've if happiness, I measure it based on calm and, and enjoyment. And that balance is not perfect for me. I'm not this like perfect human. Trust me. I, I snap at my kids a lot. Like we all are human and I'm yeah. very okay with admitting that, but success is saying that was a really great two minutes laying on the floor with my kids watching their, their projector of the stars. God, that yeah. was, that was a moment that was, whew, that felt good. And that's, that's how awesome. I measure success. So where do our listeners find more of Brooke Weinstein? Uh, I would say the best place to find me and the most fun place and informative place is Instagram. Um, I love to show all the different sides of me, the fun, goofy side and the serious neuroscience geek, um, which <laughs> my handle is Brooke with an E and then half of my last name, Weinstein, which is W E I N S T as well as my website, brookweinstein.net. Um, yeah, so. That's how you we will put it. all that stuff in the show notes and I'll ask this last question. If I steal your cell phone, which I'm sure assuming is around there somewhere. If I steal your cell phone from you, what is that one app besides email and calendar? Cause you got to have that for your business, but what's the one app you'd be really stressed out if I deleted. All these questions and my silences. Um, <laughs> The She's first like, oh, thing that came to mind when you said, if I steal your phone, I'm going to say my thought was, okay, well, great. Call me if my kids need me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just answer At the least someone and has it and knows how to get in yeah. touch with me or get in touch with someone if my kids are in trouble or an emergency. But the, what's the one app I couldn't live without, you said? Yeah. Oh, my picture app. Okay. I'm a big picture guy. I'm a, actually a picture geek. So you just never know. It's kind of a fun question. That's you never a good know one. That's get. a good question. Yeah. That yeah. is a really well, good question. Brooke, it has been awesome having you on the circuit of success. I've enjoyed our time together today. And uh, I'm going to say this is going to be called I'm doing enough. We're all Damn doing right. enough. Wouldn't you agree? I agree. Well, thanks for being with us today, Brooke. Thank you.